what was Paul's thorn in the flesh? Have you ever heard about uh, Paul had a thorn in the flesh? What could this be? Now, we see that Paul speaks of a thorn in the flesh in uh, the book of um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 7, where it says, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, Paul calls it a messenger of Satan that had a purpose to torment. And uh, many explanations have been put forward. Uh, but whether Paul is referring to a physical, a spiritual, or emotional affliction, or something else entirely, uh, has never been answered with the satisfaction. Since uh, he was not talking of a literal thorn, he must have been speaking metaphorically. Some of the most popular theories of uh, of uh, <laughs> Paul's this thorn thing interpretation might have been uh, probably a temptation. You know, Paul maybe he, he was facing a very major temptation, or uh, probably a chronic eye problem or malaria, or uh, migraines, or uh, we can talk of um, epilepsy, and uh, a speech disability. And uh, some even state that the thorn refers to a person, a person such as uh, a guy who was called uh, Alexander. I don't know if you've ever heard uh, <laughs> Alexander the coppersmith who did Paul a great deal of harm. And he spoke about this in uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse 14, uh, whereby Paul says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Maybe that, that was one of them. But uh, no one can say for sure uh, what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. But it was a source of real pain in the apostle's life he was always complaining about this now paul's uh, clues send us to the thorn's purpose what was the purpose okay what would have been the purpose why there was this thorn in the flesh of paul the bible tells us uh concerning paul that uh, the bible says in uh, acts 9 2 and desired of him uh, actually <laughs> no before before actually I, I talk about that let me show you this let me show you this uh, something here concerning the fl that thorn look at this verse first huh? and I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure you see that's that was the main goal to keep paul humble okay so paul had to be kept humble by this thorn in the flesh because think about paul is a uh, someone who has written almost uh, uh, over half of the new testament so it could have made him a bit proud but this thorn was specifically to make sure that paul is humbled all this time and uh we see when God was commissioning Paul to go and uh, preach what really happened. This is where I was showing you uh, this verse here. In Acts 9.2, it says, And he desired him of letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them abound unto Jerusalem. This Paul, when he's heading to go and persecute the church. Now, let's see what really happened. And... Uh, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and uh, heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. Is it, hard for, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. 
and we continue and the trembling and astonished uh, said that that's of course Paul eh? he said Lord what will thou have me to do and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the city and shall be told thee what thou must do and of course we see uh, the men which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no man this is a time when uh, Paul was being converted okay after he was converted of course he went to preach and uh, to add to that fact Paul was moved by the Holy Spirit to write much of the New Testament. And it is easy to see how Paul could have become haughty or exalted above measure or too proud. But uh, Paul says that the affliction came, this affliction, this thorn came from by a messenger of Satan. You see what, what uh, the Bible says, that there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to keep me from exalting myself. You see, that's the main goal of this thorn. It was to make sure that Paul remains loyal and humble. Are you seeing the point here? Just as God allowed Satan to torment Job, the same way God allowed Satan to torment Job, in the book of Job, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 12, you can go and read there. But God allowed Satan to torment Paul likewise so that God can be able to pass, I don't know, his message for his own good purpose. You understand? So we understand no one likes to live in pain. Nobody likes to live in pain. Paul sought the Lord three times to remove this source of pain from him. He prayed and told God, please remove this pain. And we can see this in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 18. I'll just read you the first part. He says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice. You see, Paul is calling upon God three times that it might, be, it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. You see, God is refusing to take away this thorn from the flesh of uh, uh, Paul because he's saying that his strength is shown perfect, is meant perfect in weakness. Whenever you're weak, that's the time that God wants to show his strength. You, you see, Paul probably had many good reasons why it should be pain-free. He could have uh, had a more effective ministry. He could have reached more people with the gospel. He could have glorified God even much more. You see, much more. But the Lord was more concerned with building Paul's character and preventing pride. Instead of removing the problem, whatever it is, God gave Paul more overwhelming grace and more compensating strength. He gave him more strength. And Paul learned that God's power is made perfect in weakness. That's exactly what God wanted to pass. And uh, the exact nature of Paul's thorn in the flesh is uncertain. There is probably a good reason that we don't know. And God likely wanted Paul's difficulty to be described in general enough times to apply to any difficulty or any issue that we may face now in our lives whether the thorn we struggle with today is physical emotional spiritual we can know that god has a purpose and that is great his grace is always sufficient he shows his power in time of weakness so that's that's about paul and that's about what exactly this thorn in the flesh was all about uh, of course, nobody knows exactly if it was physical or spiritual, but uh, we understand it was from a messenger of Satan. And uh, if you're still there and you don't know the gospel, you're not still saved, please get saved. This is the time that uh, you need to change and uh, because the time is near. And the only way you can be saved is through the gospel. And uh, many people don't really understand what the gospel is. The gospel is the good news means good news about what Jesus did for us at the cross. Jesus died for us at the cross. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. All you need to do is understand that fact and believe it, and then you confess what you've believed. You see, the sinner's prayer does not save. That's why just praying a prayer cannot save you, but you have to understand 
You have to know that you're a sinner, you hear the gospel, you understand the gospel, and then you believe the gospel and you confess what you've believed. So the aspect of prayer is just a confession of what you've believed. So it's very important for you to hear, understand, and believe, and then you confess. Just tell Jesus that, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins, you are buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And once you do that, my friends, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. So if you enjoyed these videos, please, you can uh, give them a like. You can also share and subscribe to watch more videos. And also, at the description below, we have a couple of other channels uh, outside YouTube where you can go and check them out. And also, share the message to other people. Let them also hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you, and have a blessed time.